Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in this video we're going to be talking about a galaxy that's relatively close to us but is never really talked about very often. A galaxy that's not very well known, even though it is quite easily visible. We are also going to talk about a discovery coming from this galaxy that helps us explain how certain stars form. Let's discuss this in more detail and welcome to What The Math. So what you're looking at right here is our representation of the Milky Way galaxy, our own home. Now by now I think pretty much almost everyone is familiar with the Andromeda galaxy, which can be seen right there in the night skies. It is relatively far from us, it's about two and a half million light years away, but um, at the same time it's very well known. Now I'm not entirely sure why the Andromeda became so popular over the years, but it is larger and possibly more massive than the Milky Way. And it's also, of course, on a collision course with our galaxy. But if you look nearby, if you look around, you will discover a galaxy that we're talking about today. It's actually not very far from Andromeda. And specifically, it's somewhere right here in this region. And this is the Triangulum Galaxy. A galaxy, as you can see, that's also quite visible, but somehow a lot more obscure and way less known than the Andromeda. This is kind of what the simulated version of this galaxy looks like, but if you were to point your telescope at it, you would see something like this. If you do have a telescope at home and you also have a dark enough skies, you can definitely try to check it out. It's a beautiful galaxy. Here's actually a much more detailed version of this image, and it contains some of the most active regions in the nearby space. It produces a lot of stars, roughly around five times faster than the Andromeda galaxy, and it's also a place with a lot of really highly energetic areas. And specifically this region right here that's part of the galaxy is one of the most well-studied and well-known nurseries for um, basically the creation of new stars. It's very highly energetic, it contains a lot of hydrogen, and is quite easily visible. The Triangulum Galaxy is also very peculiar because right at the center of the galaxy, just as you would expect, it has a lot of really highly ener energetic activity. And specifically right there in the middle of this galaxy is an extremely powerful X-ray source that is actually even more powerful than the one in the middle of Andromeda Galaxy. But what is really unusual about this galaxy is that, even though you would think it's some sort of a black hole, it seems that this galaxy does not contain any supermassive black hole at its center. And the unusual X-ray source is caused by something else, something extremely mysterious. Some scientists suggested that the black hole might be there, just a lot smaller, possibly less than 3000 masses of our sun, but if that is so, it still doesn't explain what causes this particular X-ray source. So there's at least one mystery we still don't really know how to solve. And by the way, this right here, also known as NGC 604, is also simulated in Space Engine and you can kind of see it right there. It's a very easily visible nebula-like formation. So this right here um, is where a lot of new stars are formed and it's an extremely beautiful and exceptionally bright um, area of this galaxy. Apart from that, there are actually quite a lot of other really interesting and really unusual discoveries related to this galaxy, which we'll probably cover in some of the future videos, but I think the one that I wanted to mention here is in regards to the biggest stellar mass black hole we've discovered. Basically, a typical uh, black hole that orbits around another object is also in this galaxy, and uh, you can easily find this in Space Engine by looking up an object known as M33 um, X-7. So there's a black hole right here, it's about 15 or over 15 masses of the sun, and it's the largest stellar mass black hole we've ever discovered. Basically a typical black hole uh, that orbits around another object and produces a lot of radiation. But none of this still explains to me personally why this galaxy is just not really popular. It's not really talked about that much. I guess it is a little bit smaller than the Milky Way, it's roughly around 60% the size of our galaxy, and it has about 10 times less stars um, in general, but it's a very exciting place, and which is why this study that's coming out of Japan is kind of exciting to cover, because we finally are talking about the Triangulum Galaxy. So what exactly did the Japanese scientists discover? 
Well, these scientists were studying the creation of really, really massive stars. Specifically stars that are so massive that they usually live only a few million years and then explode, producing extremely large and very bright supernova. And actually, a star that orbits the black hole I just showed you is one such example. We are not entirely sure how they're formed. Uh, there are some speculations that maybe they're formed when several stars combine together, or maybe they somehow form through interactions of various clouds in the galaxy. And so these Japanese scientists were able to not just discover but visually show us how these stars are formed and all of this is done by looking at the Triangulum Galaxy where many stars are formed right now. What they did was zoom in to one part of the galaxy right here where they found these really really large clouds of gas and this gas is slowly coming together. And basically imagine that there are several really large dust clouds, something like 200 light years across, possibly containing over 50,000 masses of the sun in total, all of them kind of slowly colliding into another and creating these large formations. And so they looked at these clouds using various frequencies in various telescopes to make sure that they're not just looking at the visual perspective, but also at the radio frequencies that would be produced by, for example, hydrogen or um, carbon monoxide or other molecules that are in this area. And after this, they used the data from the Hubble telescope to look at the same area to see what's really there. And what they discovered are these really large bright spots indicating that there are supermassive, extremely large and extremely bright stars that were just formed not so long ago, possibly within about half a million years from when we're observing them. And they've basically discovered roughly around 10 stars, all in the same region, all of these are very bright O or B stars, pretty much similar to what you see right here, an extremely powerful, extremely large star that is going to live only a few million years and then explode in a supernova producing more radiation, more clouds and materials that might one day form a sun-like star. And so this study definitely showed us visually and kind of proves once and for all that these large and massive stars that eventually result in stars like our sun are formed by the collision of these clouds, many of which are happening right now and will be happening for many years to come in the Triangulum Galaxy. So this is definitely a place for us to study star formation. Now it's still not entirely clear what even caused these clouds to form and uh, what possibly led to their collision, but we know that this will probably happen again, specifically in a few billion years from now, when this galaxy has a very high chance of colliding with the Milky Way. As a matter of fact, today there is a lot of evidence to suggest that the Triangulum Galaxy, also known as M33, will very likely come in front of the Andromeda and collide with the Milky Way first before the Andromeda Galaxy joins and forms a very large, extremely massive galaxy, possibly known as Mildromeda. We don't really have a good name for it yet. But the idea of the collision between Triangulum and the Milky Way is still being explored because we're not entirely sure of what the actual speed of both of these galaxies in relation to the Milky Way is yet. We just know that they're headed our way, we're just not sure who is going to come here first. And if the galactic collision with the uh, Triangulum Galaxy does happen first, it's very likely it's going to happen in about two and a half billion years from today. So by the time when, well, our Earth is probably not going to be habitable anymore, and it's very likely that the sun is still going to be just as bright and as powerful as it is today, possibly even hotter. But it's not going to be a red giant yet. And following this collision, it's very likely that the shape of the Milky Way will change quite a lot. And it's also very likely that once the Andromeda joins in, our galaxy will become something similar to um, many different elliptical galaxies, like for example, M87. It might not have a very regular shape, it might be very different from what we even imagine today, but it's probably not going to be a typical spiral galaxy for quite a long time until gravity stabilizes its shape. But anyway, we'll talk more about galactic collisions in some of the future videos. For now, I really just wanted to talk about the Triangulum Galaxy. I've only made one video about this galaxy over the existence of this channel, and it's a little bit embarrassing that we don't talk more about it. There are actually not enough papers on this galaxy, even though there are a lot of really cool things happening here. Hopefully this will change with time. For now, that's really it. It's a very cool paper. Check out the paper in the description below. 
and subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and come back tomorrow to learn something else. I'll see you tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye-bye.